Hey guys, so for this video I surveyed the players in the Fluandry's uh, Facebook as well as Discord duelist groups just to gather their thoughts in terms of you know, the strengths and weaknesses of this deck and much more. And I've been doing this for a lot of different meta strategies and will continue to do so moving forward. So definitely go check those videos out. Anyways, a big thanks to the 106 players that responded. That is actually uh, the record uh, number of responses for this type of video. So really big thanks to you. Uh, certainly this video would not have happened without your input. Now before we continue, definitely go check out those discount codes for Yu-Gi-Oh! singles as well as supplies. I'll have all of those links in the description below for you to use. Now in terms of how the Flunder players rated the difficulty of piloting this deck, uh, it averaged around 5, which is uh, actually the lowest in terms of the score among all the other decks that I've surveyed so far. But at the same time, you know, I certainly want to be respectful uh, to the Flunder players. Like, you obviously do require skill to pilot this deck optimally, especially when it comes to resource management. That definitely uh, shows in, you know, bigger level of tournaments. So definitely uh, don't underestimate the ability to be able to pilot this deck. Now in terms of how the pilots uh, rate the consistency of this deck, it averaged around 6. Now this is actually a bit of a newer question that I started asking uh, since the tier limit video, so I don't have uh, a lot of comparison, but realistically I think this deck has uh, known to have a lot of consistency bricky uh, ness issues that you will also see in the weakness section, so 6 is really not all that high. Now in terms of how the players would uh, categorize this deck, in terms of tiers, I'll most put it at tier 2, which I think is like the fair spot to put them. Actually a decent chunk in 23% still think them as like a tier 1 strategy. I mean we do have uh, Age of Overload format coming right around the corner starting this uh, weekend with uh, the YCS Indie, so I uh, certainly look forward to how the deck will do at that event. Now in terms of the key strengths of Flunder, and I try my best to summarize the key themes uh, from the survey responses, and the first one that came up uh, very, very often is it's just a uh, very, very insanely strong grind game, and also it's sort of, you know, resource looping, or sort of, you know, quote-unquote, uh, infinite resources, just constantly being able to get those birds back, so that is something that is a key strength, but another one is just that it doesn't lose to a lot of standard blowouts in, like, the current meta in terms of uh, certain floodgates, like, let's say, like Dimension of Barrier, very strong against something like per uh, Pearly, or Branded, and speaking of Branded, Gimmick Puppet Nightmare, uh, locking out a special summon. It uh, doesn't matter for Flunder, they're only normal summon, and similar uh, can be said for Ibli, which also, for the most part, locks uh, opponents out of uh, kind of like special summoning, at least in the way that they want to, uh, and again, Flunder does not care about that. Uh, access to very, very strong Floodgate effects like Dimension Shifter and Feather Storm, which, you know, realistically, there's not much counterplay to cards like these, uh, and just uh, being detrimental for most strategies that are out there. And lastly, another strength is just being able to play on the opponent's turn, right? And, you know, it's not your turn, it's our turn. Now, in terms of how the pilots rate the uh, deck's ability to go first and, you know, kind of like their setup, uh, board setup, which uh, doesn't always look too, too strong uh, at a first glance, but, you know, their Dreaming Town and, like, the map can really lead, uh, snowball into other uh, disruptions, which we'll get to very shortly. Although its ability to go second, uh, they definitely rated that kind of low at 5.7. Uh, I think it, traditionally it's been known where it's very hard to for this deck to go second with, like, engine alone. It really needs a lot of, like, the non-engines, like, you know, Dark Ruler and the Evil Need to be able to actually uh, play through a complete board. Now, in terms of the typical end board for Flunder, and of course, uh, it is typical, not ideal. Uh, and this is actually a bit more straightforward for Flunder, and that is something like, let's say, the map and the Dreaming Town, which ad leads to additional summons, which can lead to additional interruptions. But also just having something like M-Pen, which is kind of like a floodgate for a lot of special summon monsters, you know, like those that are in attack mode. And if you're a lake monster, you have no choice but to be in attack mode. So that's always strong, of course, something like map and Dreaming Town. Uh, Dreaming Town also being able to serve as a Book of Eclipse, but also leading to additional interruptions like the Mega Ryza, which can, you know, bounce some cards. Uh, and also, of course, an Apex Avian as an Omni Negate. Now, if you played Apex Avian like I did back in like 2019 when you're playing Pendulum Magicians, you do need to know that you know it does have to return to the hand to serve as that Omni Negate. So just keep that in mind if you didn't know. Uh, some other add-ons, of course, uh, something like you know the uh, Unexplored Winch, which can uh, tribute the opponent's card and not just monster, but they can just tribute like let's say back row uh, to summon their monsters, which is really insane. And the more insane part is the fact that tributing your opponent's cards uh, that is actually not once per turn. It's just like the Mulligan effect is. Uh, now in terms of Featherstorm, that's another addition that they either have to hard draw or let's say they uh, go into thrust after you hand trap them. And realistically, there's just no way to uh, stop this card uh, with Red Rebunk on, and you're just probably getting your turn skipped if you're facing against a Feather Storm. And of course, uh, while Dimension Shifter is technically not a turn one board per se, uh, but you know, it is an add-on that is kind of integral to their strategy as well. And just like banishing every card, again, as I said earlier, is detrimental for most strategies that are out there. 
Now, in terms of uh, what hand traps the pilots felt that it impacted Flunder the most, we do have something like Droll being number one. This is kind of weird because, yes, of course, if you can use Droll, it's very, very strong at the same time. If they have something like Dimension Shifter, you're not going to be able to Droll, unfortunately, because, you know, Droll does have to go to the grave. Uh, so it's very, like, hit and miss in that regard, but can be very good. Uh, of course, Ash, uh, it's also kind of strange because, depending on the hand, they can chain block it to a point where Ash isn't very relevant. But, you know, if they only have, like, Rubina, I guess, yes, Ash can be very, very strong. Uh, you have some Something like Lancia, which also people put, you know, not being able to vanish, of course, kind of goes against the Flunder strategy at the same time. Uh, Lancia has not really seen meta play for quite some time, so that's not really something that they have to worry about anymore. Imperm Veiler, you know, of course, uh, it can be good, but again, if they have something like Book of Moon or um, or preferably something like Avent, uh, then they can also play around that as well. Uh, Ghost Ogre is another card that is just not really seeing any competitive play, at least for the last little while, but on the map can be good. This was actually quite uh, played quite a lot about over like a year and a half ago, I would say, back when Flunder was meta, but you also had all the adventure stuff uh, kind of happening for the first time, and you know, being able to Ogre on the adventure engine is also strong. So it saw some play there, but since then, I would say it's definitely declined a lot. And the rest are uh, not really worth siding against Flunder. And also want to take the chance to highlight, uh, definitely use my code Hakuna5 for 5% uh, off on Yu-Gi-Oh! Singles at Card Brawlers or Tier 0 games. Uh, definitely go check those out if you want these hand traps or other board breakers and staples. Now in terms of the board breakers that are most impactful against this strategy, you'll notice a key theme here where the first few cards are very back row hate uh, oriented cards. And of course Feather Duster, Lightning Storm, um, while they can use uh, Dreaming Town still, uh, at the same time that does play into now Thrust and Talents of course. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone or Twin Twister, Quick Play is always nice because you know you want to try to like snipe that uh, Dreaming Town because that card can only be activated in the main phase. Uh, evenly matched, um, technically, I mean I guess it can be good but they can just keep the Dreaming Town and then that uh, might actually still be enough uh, for them to like still have a chance especially because you are sacrificing the battle phase that means they do have another turn for themselves and you know their grind game uh, again as mentioned at the earlier video uh, earlier part of the video uh, it is very very strong super poly i think uh it can be good you know of course against something like apex avian and mpen yeah sure but at the same time if they still have like the map or dreaming town live you know they can still regenerate most of their board i find uh forbidden droplet uh can be good but it falls along the same flaw as something like droll where you know if your opponent uh use shifter then unfortunately you're not going to be able to draw Droplet. And the rest are more like kind of like monster clearing cards, uh, which I guess uh, it can be still decent, but again, uh, back oriented side strategy is probably uh, the better option if you have uh, limited options in terms of siding. And lastly, in terms of the floodgates that are key against this Flunder strategy, we do have Zombie World being number one. Not a surprise, especially because, you know, not only can they not add their little birds back because they're not, uh, Wing Beast being summoned, they're zombies, but on top of that, you also just cannot tribute, uh, you actually cannot even tribute set, which is key in terms of uh, unexplored wins being able to tribute opponent's uh, cards away, uh, which you can at least do for something like, I don't know, like Skill Drain, Summon Limit. Uh, but Zombie World, very, very strong. There can be only one, also very strong. They are Wing Beast. Uh, Skill Drain can also be really good, but again, if this is kind of like the only card you're allowed on you have nothing else like if they have access to unexplored wins they'll at least be eventually be able to get out of that situation uh, and the rest i think the uh the players that responded might have maybe they were either trolling or they kind of did not understand the question properly because i think they were just putting cards that they might put in because obviously you're not going to side uh rivalry or grave or d barrier against flunder and finally, in terms of the key weaknesses that the uh, Flunder players highlighted for this deck, and the one that came up in pretty much every response was just like the consistency issues and just like bricking and just, you know, the deck losing to itself. Uh, and that is just something that, uh, you know, you have to be mindful of. They do play uh, pod cards, but especially if those, especially something like Prosperity, if that gets limited or even maybe banned, that's another concern that Flunder players will have. Uh, being able to play through a complete board is another uh, weakness. And there's actually some other uh, themes that say inability uh, to play through one hand trap at times at certain times you you know your opponent might not even have an opportunity let's say you shift to them they can't roll you or let's say you have the cards to be able to chain block ash uh, so that it is no longer relevant and also of course you know being able to like out like tower monsters so these last three points are actually they all have the common theme in that they do require non-engine to be able to kind of like uh, play through this kind of stuff uh, so that is kind of like the key uh, weaknesses of Flunderer. Anyways, that was it for the breakdown of the Flunder Pilot Survey responses. Again, a huge thanks to all of you who responded. Uh, definitely really appreciated. A big thanks to all of you for watching this video. A huge thanks to my patrons as always uh, for continuing to support the channel. Really appreciate it. And well, take care guys.